Normally when we set up shoots, the complexity is in the setup and design of the actual scene. Whether you're like setting up lights or C-stands or what modifiers, maybe you're just having LED strip setup. So you're so setting up all night, like soldering and programming a little, little Arduinos just in order to make the, your, your, your dream come true. Uh, a lot of the work goes into that. And in this case, all the work pretty much went into Jennifer Morris's hands to set things up using a two light setup, which we'll talk about in a second. It's a very simple setup. Uh, and the rest of the actual tech stuff lied in how we did a remote shoot using uh, Canon, EOS, Tethering Utility, and team viewer. I decided what I was going to do is take and drop off my gear is I basically dropped her off a tripod, uh, a laptop, uh, a Canon 6D, a 50 millimeter 1.4, and of course a USB cable. And that was pretty much it. Uh, the laptop is a really old MacBook Air that used to belong to my wife when she was uh, when she was working, but they got her a new one because it was from like 2011. So so we had an extra laptop just basically sitting around doing nothing. And if you're a photographer, you probably already know it's like already just this, just saying team viewer tethering. Boom! You're like, oh my god, this is so easy to set up. So the setup is gave JMO the uh, JMO Jennifer Morris gave JMO the tripod camera setup, all that stuff, showed her the basics of how to work it, and then I left that stuff at her house, and that was it. Now, a lot of models also happen to be photographers, so they would already have this stuff set up, and if you're a model watching this, and you're, you're probably, now you're just like, oh my gosh, yes, yes, of course, tethering team viewer, yes, yes, uh, but I'm going to show you guys the shoot in action, so you guys get a good idea of just how we orchestrate this. Now, the setup for how I recorded this was pretty easy. I basically recorded the screen on my PC, uh, and I also recorded the FaceTime conversation so that way I have both angles for you guys to view while we uh, you know, actually set up and do this entire shoot. She had uh, some AirPods in for uh, for the duration of the shoot which actually added to the story that we were telling with uh, uh, with it which is it's kind of meta uh, you know the what, what we're doing is we're doing a shoot so that we can earn some money because right now she's not working. And so that's kind of like what the setup is. And that's also the story of what it is that we're doing. Models are doing whatever they can in order to make a buck. And photographers obviously trying to do the same thing. And so that's effectively what the story is. So her having the earbuds and just totally plays into what it is that we're doing, right? Uh, very fourth wall, <laughs> kind of violating the fourth wall quite a bit in this one. Also with this setup, it allows me to very easily add music to the scene if I wanted to. So I was able to play some music off of YouTube from the laptop. I wasn't able to hear it, so it was perfect for her. Uh, and also, I had a document that I'd pre-set up with a bunch of poses, so I could just pull something on and say, okay, here's a pose, here's a pose, here's a pose. I went through, I already knew what the room looked like, and so I went through and I found a bunch of poses that would relate to this particular type of setup, and I also divided them up into angles, because I knew I was going to shoot from different angles within the room, so I tried to set it up in such a way so that way she could see okay we're at this angle now let's try this pose let's try this pose let's try this pose so it wasn't like i was totally without any kind of an example or anything to give her uh, i had access to the internet so i could just pull up whatever i wanted to show her and it made communication so much easier and so what we do is i take the shot and it goes into a Dropbox folder. The Dropbox folder syncs to my PC. So I have the picture like that. Now, everything that you need is on the screen. You're controlling the camera directly. You can move the focus box around. You can adjust the aperture, the ISO, all that good stuff. The lighting in the room is fairly dim. It's one single bulb that's like probably 650 lumens and then a cheap ring light that's putting out probably like five lumens. It's, it's really, really weak, but it's adding enough light to the scene that I can get about, ISO 2000 and it's perfect. It's, it's exactly what we need. Uh, not too much noise, but just, you know, just a little bit. Now the camera, like I said, is a 60 full frame. So noise on that is going to be minimal at best at 2000. If you're working with a crop sensor, ISO 2000 might introduce more noise than you're comfortable with. Now, of course, you don't have to shoot in a dark scene like this. This is just the mood that we went for for this uh, particular set. If you're shooting outdoor, you could use whatever settings you want. This is not really about the settings for the shoot. This is just to show that you can control literally every function of this camera by using this software uh, and this software is free to download from Canon's website. The hardest part was communicating where I needed the frame to be but because the model can see what I see which is what you're seeing because she can see all of this she can also like go and position things in the frame accordingly. Now 
models are also sometimes photographers, so they have an eye for this thing. And also some models are not photographers, so they work with enough. They know what looks good, where the, they should be in the frame, what angles, all that good stuff. So them having the control of where to aim it with the ability to see what it, uh, what it is that you see is just, it's perfect. As a matter of fact, this is a setup that would probably work in any shoot where a model can see herself. The actual communication part is key. We were on FaceTime together so I can see what she's doing. Whenever I'm snapping a picture uh, through the tether, it freezes the frame for just a moment. So if I'm taking multiple pictures at a time, it's locking up the frame. I can't view it. Now, if you're using a mirrorless camera, that may not be an issue with tethering software. I have a mirrorless camera, but I've never used the tethering software, so I don't know if that's the case, but I definitely know that DSLRs always uh, black out the screen temporarily whenever you're taking a shot. And so the way that I was able to see what she was doing was using the FaceTime camera, and I would use that as my guide for where she's posing while I'm snapping off pictures. The pictures all saved locally to the PC there, and then I was able to transfer them after the fact, which made this basically this entire setup so much easier. And this setup is actually pretty expandable too. So if you're a model and you have lighting and obviously camera, tripod, all that good stuff, you can get all the all that function working through the tether. So that way the photographer could come in and be the director and kind of orchestrate everything and then trigger it and then activate the lights and then get the file and then so on and so forth. <laughs> the setup was just great, man. Uh, I'm going to be doing this again and again as often as I can uh, from the safety of my home. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back and work with models in person, but you know... The precautions that we have to take, some models are not comfortable with that kind of stuff yet. Even I am not comfortable working with just a random model or inviting them over to my home where everybody's here because nobody's working because schools are closed. So there's a lot there's there's a lot of things that we have to balance in order to figure out how we're going to make these things work. And I think that this tethering uh, functionality and team viewing into tethering is going to be the way that uh, that we make that happen. And you know what? Like after this is all done, it doesn't necessarily mean that we can just stop doing this. Like there's a uh, Poppy C dancer who is a model in Sweden, and she's been doing remote shoots like this with photographers in beautiful Sweden, beautiful fields. And she's out there doing remote shoots with photographers from all over the world. I might hit her up and do a remote shoot this way. I'm already comfortable with the software. I hope this video helps you guys. My name is Mike B. You can find me on Patreon and on OnlyFans, aka Mike B Photo. Same thing also on Twitter and Instagram. So Jennifer Morris, though, can be found Jenny Baby JMO on uh, Instagram or Baby JMO on OnlyFans. Potentially coming soon. So thank you so much for your support. I'll see you guys later.